Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Creative Cow tutorial. And in our ongoing look at learning Avid's Media Composer and Symphony, we're going to continue on in our look at adjusting clips inside of your timeline. And what I've actually done with this tutorial is I've actually broken it down into two smaller parts. In part one, we're going to take a look at some basic trimming. In part two, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the fantastic smart tool inside of Media Composer and Symphony, and you're going to see how we're actually going to combine what we're going to learn in this lesson and in the previous lesson, and how the smart tool basically takes all the things that we've learned and combines them together into one fantastic tool. Okay, short introduction here. Let's just get into Symphony and let's get started. Okay, so let's talk about trimming. As you can see, I have a timeline that has a few shots in it here. And what I want to do is I want to adjust the in and out points of these clips. Now, you'll remember from the previous tutorial, I used extend mode. But in certain cases, you're not going to want to use extend mode. Extend mode is very limited. You're essentially limited to overwriting your shots. Basically, you're taking it, you're dragging the in or out point of one of these clips, and you're just adjusting it in the timeline. Now, we're going to do that in trim mode as well. But you're going to see in a second how much more powerful trim mode is. And why don't we just use the two clips that we're at right now? What I'm going to do is I'm going to get in into trim mode. Now, a few ways to get into trim mode. For me, the easiest way is the keyboard shortcut, and that is by simply pressing U. Now, that is the standard keyboard shortcut that everybody has when they first create new user settings. Now, this is what trim mode looks like. You'll see right now what is basically happening is, is that I'm adjusting the outgoing frame of this shot, and I'm adjusting the incoming frame of this shot to be exactly the same. Essentially what I'm doing is I'm working almost like in extend mode. So if I wanted to take this shot and extend it down and shorten this shot here, no problem. All I need to do is simply grab the edit point and simply drag it to where I want to go. And you'll see as I drag, I can see the last frame being adjusted here and the first frame of this shot being adjusted here. So you'll see I can bring that all the way down to here if I wanted to. And you'll see basically all I've done is lengthen this shot and shorten this shot. What I'm going to do is just undo what I just did. What I'm going to do is press Y to step back into edit mode. I'm going to hit U to step back into trim mode. Because let's say hypothetically now, what I want to do is I want to extend the outgoing frame of this shot. So I want to basically extend this shot, and I want to push everything down the timeline. Very easy to do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tell Symphony or Media Composer that I want to adjust the outgoing shot. And as soon as I click on it, you're going to see that the segment is going to adjust down here. It's now yellow, and it's actually on this side of the bar, not the other side as we had before. What it's basically telling me is that we're adjusting the outgoing frame of this shot. Now, let's say I wanted to go down, I don't know, one second. What I'm going to do is I'm just simply going to jump down eight frames three times, because remember, I'm working in 24 frames. So let's just go one, two, three. What's going to happen is, is you'll see this shot is now extended and it pushes everything else down the timeline. So let's undo that for a second here because obviously this works in reverse as well. Let's say we want to adjust this shot here and we want to extend it down, but we want to keep the same duration of this shot here. No problem. What we're going to do is we're going to click on this shot. We're now adjusting the incoming frame. Again, I'm going to go back one second. Actually, you know what? Let's go back two seconds. All I'm going to do is hit this key three times, one, two, three, one, two, three. It's actually six times to adjust it two seconds. And you'll see now this clip is now longer. It's pushed this clip down, but it's kept these two clips exactly the same duration. So you can see how working in trim mode, you know, is very, very handy. And you're going to want to get in and use trim mode when you want to get in and do finite adjustments to your edits. Okay, so I think we're ready to mix things up a little bit. We're going to combine what we learned in the last lesson with this lesson here by activating our smart tool. Now, how does the smart tool work? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to get back into edit mode by simply hitting Y on the keyboard. And I'm just going to take a clip and I'm just going to stick it onto video two here. Sure, why not this one? Why not? Let's just take that. We're going to edit it onto video layer two here. I'm just going to drop it in right here. Because you'll see I was going back and forth and I was picking different tools to do different jobs using different keyboard commands. But what if there was a way that I could work without having to do all that and I could just have Media Composer or Symphony know what I wanted to do? 
Well, there is a way to do that. And how we do that is with the smart tools. Now, you're going to see that my timeline is very, uh, very thin. What I'm going to do just for the purposes of showing this to you is I'm actually going to increase the size of the layers in my timeline. Very easy to do. All I'm going to do is press Control and L on Windows, Command and L on the Mac to increase the size of the tracks. Now, on the flip side, if I want to shrink them back, it's Control and K. I think that was about what I had it at before. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here to my View menu, and I'm going to save this as what I'm going to call Normal. And of course, because I can save that as normal, what I'm going to do here is we'll just increase the size of this way out, and we'll now call it medium. So you'll see if something else we learned today, the different timeline views. So there's normal, and there's medium. Now, I did this for a reason, and you're going to see why in just a second. Now, to activate the smart tools, we're going to come over here, and we're actually going to not going to click on each one of the uh, tools individually. We're going to click right here to toggle the entire smart tool on. Now, in most cases, when you're dragging around the timeline, you're not even going to notice that it's actually doing anything, but it's going to as soon as you bring your mouse over top of a clip. Now, you'll see as soon as I brought the mouse over top of a clip, I suddenly got the red segment tool, the overwrite tool. And you'll remember that we talked about using this tool to get in, and I think what I'll do here is I'm just going to shorten this shot here a little bit by using the add edit command. And let's just mark this clip and shorten it. There we go. Okay, good. And let's talk about that again. I'll just back up here. You'll remember, like I said, when I bring the mouse over top of the clip, suddenly the segment tool becomes activated. You'll notice, though, if I keep dragging, what's going to happen is that segment tool is going to change colors. It's now changed from overwrite to insert. So that should mean that if I take this clip again, I'm going to hold Control on Windows Command on the Mac. I can snap this to this edit point, and I can overwrite the clip that was there. On the flip side, if instead of coming down to the overwrite segment tool, I come down to the insert segment tool, I should be able to take this and insert this shot in between these two shots and push everything down, which I did. So you'll see now that I can actually do a lot of these commands without actually having to get in and start clicking shortcuts on the keyboard or clicking shortcuts in the timeline window or in the composer window or anything like that. Symphony and Media Composer knows what I want to do based on where I have the mouse. Now, this is a technique that's very familiar to Final Cut Pro 7 users. Final Cut Pro 7 did things like this, and depending on where you dragged clips or had your mouse, you might see a different icon on the timeline to do different things. This is a welcome addition to Media Composer that came in in version 5. Okay, so again, I'm just going to undo what I just did. I think I'm actually just going to delete this clip in general here. Let's just select it. I'll just hit backspace here to delete it because I want to talk about the trim, uh, the trim smart tools. Again, work exactly the same as the segment tools. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come down, and we'll just use this edit point here as our example. And there's something cool that we can do in here that we can't actually do in normal trim mode, which is I can come up here, and using the overwrite trim mode, you'll see if I go in between the clips just like that, it functions just like the standard extend key that we talked about before. I'm just going to undo what I just did. But like much like with the segment tools, red and yellow, we have the same thing with trim, red and yellow. Now, if I use the overwrite trim mode, I can take this clip, I can drag it back, and leave a black gap in between those two clips. I'll just undo what I just did here. And again, it works the same on the incoming shot as well. Very nice. Now, again, what I can also do, I'm just going to step out of trim mode here for a second, and let's just make sure we get our smart tools activated, which we do, of course. And I just want to make sure that this is clear when I show this to you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the outgoing frame of this shot. So let's do that with the uh, segment mode, the overwrite, or pardon me, the insert segment mode. This is our yellow tool. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab the out frame, and we're going to take it, and we're just going to drag it down. What this is going to do is it's going to extend the shot that I'm dragging down, and it's going to push all of the other shots down the timeline. Now, what I'm going to do is just undo that. I'm just going to hit Y on the keyboard. Now let's talk about this shot right here. How do we extend this shot? Well, if I want to shorten this shot, what I'm going to do, again, I'm going to use the segment tool, the insert segment tool. I'm going to grab the in frame right here, and we're going to drag back like this to shorten this shot up just like that. What I'm going to do is just undo what I just did, because if I want to extend this shot down, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this again in the insert segment mode, and we're going to drag this way to extend the shot down. We're actually giving 
the endpoint more time. And what it's going to do is it's going to push everything down the timeline. It's a little bit of a tricky thing to wrap your head around. But once you get in and start playing around with trim mode, I encourage you to use these smart tools. They're actually very handy. The only thing that you're going to have to wrap your head around is this. What I'm going to do is just turn them off for a second. Now when I want to adjust the timeline or move my time bar around the timeline, I can grab anywhere in the timeline and just move it. The thing is, is that once I turn the smart tools on, I can't do that anymore. I have to manipulate the time bar from right up here at the top where the time code is. Now for me who's been using Media Composer for a long time, about 15 years, this is something that's very difficult to wrap my head around. So in most cases for me, I don't have them turned on. But if you're coming from Final Cut or even from Premiere Pro CS6, I highly encourage you leave those tools on and get accustomed to working like this because in the end it's going to speed up your overall workflow and get those edits done just that much faster. So if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.